The installation process begins by installing the display. You will need a power drill, a two inch hole saw, if there's no pre-drilled hole in your dash, wire connectors for connecting the power leads to your vessel's 12 volt system, wire cutting and crimping tools like I have here, and non-adhesive silicone. If you don't have room around your helm area, we offer an adjustable surface mount bracket that can be purchased from our web store. Using the included black and white face plates and bezels, choose one of the four color combinations, all black, all white, or a combination of black and white. Today I'm going to do all black. You simply place the face over the display, make sure to line up the tabs, then you take the bezel, press it on, and turn it clockwise until it snaps. We also have gold and chrome bezels can be purchased on our website to match your factory dash or give your digital depth sounder a custom appearance. Now let's find a location at the helm that will allow you to clearly view to the display during operation. Keep in mind that the wires for the transducer and power must reach the mounting location. Mark the location with a pencil, then check behind the area for wires, switches, etc. that may be damaged during cutting. If these obstructions are present, please use masking tape to hold them out of the way while you cut. In most installations, you would use a two inch hole saw to drill out the mounting hole. In this installation, we already have an empty hole in the dash, so after removing the filler plug, we're ready to insert the gauge. Seal in the exposed wood with the non-adhesive sealant. Insert the display from the front of the mounting location. Feed the wires through the flush mount bracket from behind the mounting location and install the bracket and thumb nut. If the location that you have chosen to mount the depth finder is thicker than the depth finder's display will allow, install the included thick dash extension on the display before putting the flush mount bracket on. Now let's get power to the display. It has no on or off switch, therefore you would need to connect the power harness to a power source that would turn the unit on as the power is applied. A key switch or an on-off power switch would be suitable for powering the unit. You simply connect the black wire in the harness to the negative terminal or suitable ground and then connect the red wire in the harness to the positive 12 volt switchable power source. Good examples are the key switch or an on off switch or a terminal block. Supply power to the unit by turning on the power source that you've attached the red and black wires to. The audible alarm should beep three times while the display illuminates all the LCD graphics for two seconds. Three dash lines will then be shown on the LCD display. If the display does not turn on, please refer to the manual for troubleshooting tips. Once you have verified that the depth founder is power powering on and off properly, it's time to install the transducer. Now that you've installed and done a quick test on the display, it's now time to install the transducer. In this video, we've included instructions for mounting three types of transducers, a transom mount, a glue-in, and a through hole. They are presented in that order. Feel free to use your video player to scan ahead to the transducer type you have chosen. We've tabbed each one with a 10 second black header page so that you can easily stop at the beginning of the section. The transom mount transducer is suitable for outboard, inboard outboard, single inboard, or jet drive propelled vessels. The whole dead rise angle must be below 30 degrees and the transom dead rise should be between 3 and 20 degrees. If you think that this transducer is not suitable for your vessel, contact us. We'll be happy to review your installation plan and offer suggestions for alternative transducer options. Let's begin by unpacking and reviewing the contents of the packaging. In the package, there should be a transducer with attached harness, a support bracket, a kick up bracket, two tapered shims, two cable clamps, a clamshell cable cover, two number 10 self-tapping screws, and four number six self-tapping screws. If you do not have any of these items, please contact support at norcrossmarine.com and we will rush one out to you. The tools required for this installation are a power drill, a 5 8 inch drill bit, an 8 inch drill bit, a 9 64 inch drill bit, marine seal and a caulk, a screwdriver, a marker, zip ties, cleanup rags, and a solvent. If you're going to be storing the vessel in the water, you'll also need water-based anti-fouling paint and masking tape. Now let's get started. The first step is to choose a mounting location. To obtain the best performance, the transducer should be mounted in a location 
where the water flow beneath the hull is aeration and turbulence free. Try to mount the transducer as close to the center line of the boat as possible. To get a good view of the mounting location, with the vessel out of the water, position yourself at the transom and look at the bottom of the hull towards the bow. Using the illustrations in the manual, note anything that could interrupt the clean flow of water to the transducer mounting location. Once the desired location is determined, mark it with an X using your pencil. After selecting the mounting location, let's assemble the transom mount bracket. With the locking tab in the up position, align the transducer and bracket. Then slide the transducer into the pivot bracket until it cannot slide any further. Press the locking tab down against the pivot bracket until it locks firmly into place. Then slide the pivot bracket arms through the back of the screw bracket as pictured. Grasp the transducer in your hand like this, rest the screw bracket against the solid object like the swim platform, and press the pivot bracket into the screw bracket with enough force until it snaps into place. Next, locate the transom template inserted in the operator's manual. At the desired mounting location, previously marked with an X, position the template so the arrow at the bottom is aligned with the bottom edge of the vessel, making certain that the template is parallel to the waterline of the vessel. Affix the template to the hole with tape. Using a 9 64 inch 4 mm drill bit, drill two holes 7 8 of an inch deep at the locations indicated on the template marked with an X. The bracket is designed for a standard 13 degree transom angle. To determine if the plastic shim is needed, position the transducer at the desired location. Using a straight edge, compare the underside of the transducer relative to the underside of the hole. The stern or trailing edge of the transducer should be about 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch below the bow or leading edge of the sensor. Apply a marine sealant to the threads of the two number 10 one and a quarter inch self-tapping screws and screw the bracket to the hole. Do not tighten the screws completely until you position the transducer. It's very important not to allow the leading edge of the transducer to extend more than an eighth of an inch below the bottom of the boat as this will create increased aeration and turbulence. Now tighten the transducer screws. Now route the transducer cable over the transom through a deck or splash well drain hole or through a new hole drilled in the transom. If a new hole is required, follow the instructions in the manual. Remember, it must be drilled well above the water line. Finally, route the cable to the display mounting location and connect it to the display. Something to keep in mind is that to prevent damage to the transducer, it will automatically release from the mounting bracket or kick up when it is impacted. If three dash readings are the only readings that are displayed, check to make sure that the transducer is not kicked up. Most likely you'll have to remove the vessel from the water to check it and reset it. If this happens frequently, make sure that the trailer or boat lift bunks do not interfere with the transducer during loading and unloading. If this is the case, you'll need to either move the transducer or adjust your trailer or boat lift bunks. Now that you've installed the transducer, allow sufficient drying time for the sealants and learn the setup and basic functions of the depth finder. Let's get out on the water and put it to work. If random three dash readings occur, have someone run the boat on plane for you in smooth water. Now carefully look over the transom at the water flowing from the bottom of the boat over the base of the transducer. The water should be dark in color, referred to as clean with very little turbulence or air bubbles. If there are any air bub bubbles or turbulence seen passing underneath the transducer, move the transducer farther down on the transom bracket. If the performance does not improve, move the transducer to clean water, making sure to fill any unused screw holes with marine sealant. One final note. High speed performance of the depth sounder may require extensive adjustment and testing to find the best transducer mounting location. This transducer has been tested to perform up to 60 miles an hour. Not all boat hole configurations will allow for this type of performance. If you're not satisfied with the performance of the depth sounder, it is recommended that you seek the advice of a professional marine electronics installer. This transducer is suitable for vessels with the following hull types. High speed boats to increase the performance of the depth sounder, 
trailer boats to prevent accidental damage to the transducer from trailering, shallow draft boats to prevent accidental damage to the transducer from intentional or unintentional ground, non-cored hulls or aluminum hulls thinner than one eighth of an inch. Inboard vessels have a lot of running gear that creates significant acoustic noise and water turbulence. If you think that this transducer is not suitable for your vessel, contact us by phone, email, or at our website and we'll be happy to review your installation plan and offer suggestions for alternative transducer options. The tools required for this type of installation are a plastic bag, petroleum jelly, 30 grit sandpaper, a two part of slow cure epoxy, and tie wraps. The most important thing to keep in mind is that transducers can only be glued inside holes that are solid fiberglass or up to an eighth inch aluminum. However, since boat holes absorb acoustic energy, transmitting through the hole reduces the transducer's performance. It's important to note that fiberglass holes are often reinforced in places for added strength. These cord areas contain wood or structural foam, which are poor sound conductors. To achieve optimal performance, find a location where the hole's laminate is solid fiberglass and not cord. Let's begin by establishing a baseline for the depth finder readings. Anchor or moor the vessel in a body of water away from other boat traffic. Make sure you turn off all other sonar devices on your boat and locate the vessel at least 50 feet from the nearest vessel. Now, plug the transducer cable into the back of the depth sounder display and turn the display on. Once the display is turned on, it will display the test sequence and then display three dashes. Place the transducer close to your ear. If the transducer is properly connected, it will be emitting a ticking sound, similar to a wristwatch. If you do not hear this ticking sound, recheck your connections or visit our customer service center for advanced troubleshooting. Before proceeding, make sure the keel offset feature is turned off. If it's on, the KO icon will be illuminated on the depth finder display you will need to set the keel offset to zero. Now hold the transducer over the side of the vessel so that it's the same distance below the water surface as it would be in the hole mounting location. Note the depth that is being displayed on the depth sounder. Remove the transducer from the water and proceed to testing the depth readings with the transducer at the desired in-hole location. The first thing we need to do is find a proper location for the transducer. There are three methods that we can use to test that location. The first method is the plastic bag method. If the whole surface is not smooth, sand it with 30 grit sandpaper until a smooth surface is obtained. Partially fill a thin plastic bag with water. Place the transducer inside and close it tightly with a tie wrap. Wet the surface of the hole and press the transducer face against the hole through the bag and check the depth reading on the display. The second method is to set it in the bilge water. If the transducer will be located in an area of the hole that holds water, place the transducer against the hole and allow bilge water to cover the surface where the transducer touches the hole. Now check the depth reading on the display. The third method is petroleum jelly. If the hole surface is not smooth, sand it with 30 grit sandpaper until a smooth surface is obtained. Coat the face of the transducer with petroleum jelly and press it against the hole with a twisting motion. Use duct tape to hold it in place now check the depth reading on the display. Now that you have the transducer temporarily affixed to the hole, it's time to take the vessel for a test drive. Before heading out, make sure the display is functioning properly and familiarize yourself with the operation of the display. Now remove the vessel from its mooring and operate it at idle speeds while getting to know the functions and performance of the depth sounder. Now gradually increase the boat speed and observe the depth readings. Make sure you stay in water between two and a half and 200 foot deep. If three dash readings appear, put the vessel in a slow turn. If the dash readings disappear when turning, the transducer's position probably needs adjustment because it is in aerated water. If the three dash readings do not disappear while turning, relocate the transducer using one of the previous test methods. If following the bilge water test method, make sure that your three dash readings are not caused by the bilge water flowing away from the transducer face while turning, accelerating, or decelerating. If you're happy with the performance of the depth finder, then mark the area with a pencil or marker and proceed to gluing in the transducer. Do not proceed to the next step until you are satisfied with the readings. If you have difficulties, please visit our customer service center or our website or call 
667-2767 for technical assistance. If during these tests three dash readings constantly appear, then the transducer cannot be mounted inside your hole. Follow the instructions for transom mounting the transducer or contact us and ask about exchanging your transducer for one that is more suitable for your vessel. If during these tests three dash readings randomly appear or the readings are noticeably different from the depth displayed when the transducer was hung over the side of the boat, you will probably need to find another location using the three methods described previously. If the readings are satisfactory, mark the spot in the hole and proceed. To fix the transducer to the hole, use only a two-part slow cure epoxy. Never use any adhesives or glue that is not two-part slow cure epoxy, such as silicone sealant, weather sealants, rubbery caulks, construction adhesives, five-minute or quick cure epoxies, rubber cements or 3Ms, 4200 or 5200 adhesive sealants. Start by prepping the mounting location. All surfaces to be bonded must be smooth, clean, and dry. If the whole surface is not smooth, sand it with 30 grit sandpaper until a smooth surface is obtained in an area a little larger in diameter than the length of the transducer. First, you want to clean and dry both the selected area and the face of the transducer with a weak solvent to remove any dust, grease, or oil. Next, prepare the adhesive as per the directions supplied with the adhesive. Do not mix the epoxy on the transducer. Next, you want to apply the mixed epoxy to both the entire face of the transducer and the inside of the hole. Press the transducer face onto the hole with a twisting motion to expel all the air bubbles. If the hole is slanted, temporarily secure the transducer in place with duct tape. Allow the adhesive to cure as per the manufacturer's instructions. Finally, route the cable to the display mounting location and connect it to the display. After the epoxy is dried per the manufacturer's recommendation, take the vessel for a ride. If you're not happy with the readings, there are very little adjustments you can do at this time. You will need to remove the transducer and return to step one of the glue-in instructions. If you need to remove the transducer, place a piece of wood against the base of the transducer. Gently tap the piece of wood with a hammer. Do not strike the transducer directly. Once the transducer is removed from the hole, Sand the excess epoxy adhesive off with sandpaper. Do not use chemicals to remove the excess epoxy. The through-hole transducer is suitable for outboards, inboard outboards, single or dual inboard, or jet dry propulsion. Hole dead rise angle must be below 20 degrees. Fiberglass or metal hole materials. The hole cannot be constructed of wood. If you think this transducer is not suitable for your vessel, contact us and we'll be happy to review your installation plan and offer suggestions for alternative transducer options. Let's begin by unpacking and reviewing the contents of the packaging. In the package, there should be a through-hole transducer, 30 feet of cable and a connector, a rubber gasket and a plastic nut. Water temperature models have the temperature sensor integrated inside the transducer. If you do not have any of these items, please contact support at norcrossmarine.com and we'll rush one out to you. The tools and supplies required for this installation are safety goggles, a power drill, an eighth inch drill bit, a two inch hole saw, marine sealant, zip ties, cleaning rags, and a mild cleaning solvent. If you're gonna be storing the vessel in water, you're also gonna need water-based anti-fouling paint and masking tape. Now let's get started. To obtain the best performance, the transducer should be mounted in a location where the water flow beneath the hull is aeration and turbulence free. Try to mount the transducer as close to the center line of the boat as possible. Consult the boat manufacturer for the best transducer placement. If this information is unavailable, follow the guidelines in the installation manual. To get a good view of the mounting location, with the vessel out of the water, position yourself at the transom and look at the bottom of the hull towards the bow. Using the illustrations in the manual, note anything that could interrupt the clean flow of water to the transducer mounting location. After selecting the mounting location, place the rubber gasket inside the hole against the mounting location. Ensure that there's at least a half inch of flat surface area around the rubber gasket. Place the mark in the center of the mounting location. Drill a 1 8 inch pilot hole around the mark. If there's a rib, strut, or other hole irregularly on the hole bottom near the selected mounting location, 
drill from the outside. Using a two inch hole saw, cut a hole from the outside of the hole. Using sandpaper and a mild household detergent, sand and clean the area around the hole. Make sure to remove all rough spots and petroleum residue. Remove the nut and rubber gasket from the sensor. Apply a bead of marine sealant around the lip of the sensor housing. From outside the hole, feed the cable through the hole, plug first, into the mounting hole until all the cable is inside the hole. Insert the sensor into the hole using a twisting motion to squeeze out all the excess sealant. From inside the hole, align the arrow on the housing towards the bow of the vessel. Slide the rubber gasket onto the housing. Screw the hole nut into place, being sure that the arrow on the housing is still positioned forward toward the bow. When tightening the nut, it is imperative that you hand tighten only. Never use wrenches or pliers to tighten the nut as over tightening can damage the transducer and may lead to sinking. Remove the excess sealant on the outside of the hole. Finally, route the cable to the display mounting location and connect it to the display. Now that you've installed the transducer, allow sufficient drying time for the sealants and learn the setup and basic functions of the depth finder. Let's get out on the water and put it to work. Now let's get to know your depth finder. We'll start with the shallow water alarm. The shallow water alarm function can be set for depths ranging from 3 to 200 feet and triggers an alarm when the depth is less than the setting. You must be in depth sounder mode to adjust this setting. To set the shallow water alarm, first make sure that the display is showing the current depth. On non-temperature models like the D10D, press and release the up key. On models with temperature, like the D10DX, Press and hold the up and down keys for approximately 3 seconds until the upward and downward facing triangles illuminate. Then press the up key to enter the shallow water alarm. The bell icon will illuminate and the upward facing triangle will blink. Pressing the up key will increase the selected value. Pressing the down key will reduce the value. Pressing and releasing the key will change the value in 1 foot increments per second. Holding down the key will change the value in 9 foot increments per second. After the desired setting is achieved, the display will return to normal operation after 5 seconds. The upward facing triangle and the bell indicator will now be illuminated to indicate that a shallow water alarm is set. When triggered, the depth alarm sounds an audible buzzer for 10 seconds while flashing the warning LED and the upward facing triangle on the display. After 10 seconds, the audible alarm mutes and the warning LED and the icons continue to blink until the depth increases or the alarm is reset. To reset the alarm, repeat the previous steps. The deep alarm function can be set for depths ranging to 3 to 200 feet and triggers an alarm when the depth is more than the setting. To set the deep water alarm, first make sure that the display is showing the current depth. On non-temperature models like the D10D, press and release the down key. On models with temperature, like the D10DX, press and hold the up and down keys for approximately 3 seconds until the upward and downward facing triangles illuminate. Then press the down key to enter the deep water alarm. The bell icon will illuminate and the downward facing triangle will blink. Pressing the up key will increase the selected value. Pressing the down key will reduce the value. Pressing and releasing the key will change the value in 1 foot increments per second. Holding down the key will change the value in 9 foot increments per second. After the desired setting is achieved, the display will return to normal operation after about 5 seconds. The downward facing triangle and the bell indicator will now be illuminated to indicate that a deep water alarm is set. When triggered, the depth alarm sounds an audible buzzer for 10 seconds while flashing the warning LED and the downward facing triangle on the display. After 10 seconds, the audible alarm mutes and the warning LED and the icons continue to blink until the depth decreases or the alarm is reset. To reset the alarm, repeat the previous steps. The kill offset feature is used to adjust the depth readings displayed by the device to compensate for the depth of the water required for your vessel to operate safely, typically referred to as your vessel's draft. For example, if your boat's draft is set to 3 feet, the kill offset feature should be set to 3 feet. The device will then subtract 3 feet from the actual depth readings 
and display this figure as the depth. If the water depth is 5 feet and the keel offset is set to 3 feet, the depth will be displayed as 2 feet, indicating to the operator that there is 2 feet of safe operating water. The maximum keel offset setting is 20 feet and can be set in one tenth of a foot increments. The display will show three dash lines when a negative value occurs due to the keel offset subtraction. To set the keel offset, first make sure that the display is showing the current depth. Now press and hold the up and down keys for approximately six seconds until the KO icon begins to blink. Release the keys. Press the up key to increase the keel offset value. Press the down key to reduce the value. The display will return to normal operation mode after 5 seconds if no keys are pressed. The KO icon will remain illuminated in the top left hand corner indicating that the depth readings are adjusted to the keel offset setting. Finally, let's set the units of measure for the readings. The two settings available are feet and meters. To set the units of measure, first make sure that the display is showing the current depth. Press and hold the up and down keys until the current unit of measure begins to blink, approximately 8 seconds. Release the keys. To set the units to feet, press the up key. FT will just flash on the display. To set the units to meters, press the down key. M will flash on the display. The display will return to the normal operation mode automatically after 5 seconds. This step finder's auto ranging, auto sensitivity features means you'll never have to worry about adjustments. Simply turn the power on and you're ready to go. The depth sounder emits sound signals that travel through the water and then calculates the amount of time elapsed while the signal traveled down to the bottom and returned back to the transducer. This time is calculated by a microprocessor and displayed as a depth reading. Extremely dirty water, a very soft bottom, high speeds, deep water, aeration, or a combination of the above will result in incomplete or inaccurate readings. Under these conditions, variable readings or three dashes will be displayed. If you're not happy with the on-water performance of your depth sounder, we're here to help. Rest assured that this depth sounder is engineered to the highest standards and is part of the best-selling family of depth sounders in the world. It is highly likely that your dissatisfaction is due to improper installation. Nine times out of ten, performance issues are the result of improper installation of the transducer. I cannot stress enough the transducer must be mounted so that it has an uninterrupted supply of clean, aeration-free water. If the depth finder gives accurate readings while the vessel is sitting still, but changes to dash lines while the vessel is moving, it is almost always the result of aeration to the transducer face. In this case, you should review the transducer installation guide and adjust the transducer as suggested. Thanks again for purchasing a Hawkeye depth finder. Here at Norcross Marine Products, we strive for 100% customer satisfaction. If you have a problem with your depth sounder, first review the operator's manual, then rewatch this video. If you can't find a solution to the problem, feel free to call us at 888-7-NORCROSS during normal business hours. 24-hour technical support is available online at hawkeyeelectronics.com, where you can search our online knowledge base for the latest troubleshooting and FAQs or post your own question for our support staff. For one-on-one -on -one support, please email support at norcrossmarine.com. Now get out there and enjoy your freedom.